Welcome to Trading Lounge and the Australian Report for the 16th of June. Today we're going to be looking at the ASX. We're also going to be looking at one of the banks today and I'm going to use A and Z as, as an example and sort of looking at the whole ASX picture. Obviously we know that um, that the S and that the Australian market is really going to follow the S and P 500, and this count that I've got in front of me is one of the counts. Well, our primary count for the S and P 500. So for this market to to rise, we've either got um, two things occurring. We're either going to see uh, resources push to the upside, or we're going to see banks push to the upside. Um, I believe that if it was going to be any of them, it would be the resources to the upside and um, banks to the downside. They normally work in opposite to each other. When they are working together, when banks are moving up and um, resources are moving up together, then the ASX really moves along quite swiftly. Um, so, but that's sort of only now and again within the marketplace. So, uh, you need to really understand those two forces. There are other forces, which takes us right back to the carry trade and the Australian dollar and so on, but that's another story. Um, so just those two there. So, um, we've seen the banks rally, um, and we're going to be looking um, at those, but I'll be looking at those in more of a bearish picture. Now, we can count this particular move here as uh, as uh, bearish to the upside as well. Uh, we also know that we have from the top here that we have five waves down here now, so we're going to be seeing a move back here for wave B, and then we can see wave C come down. So we could have this particular count here. I don't like this count because of this particular structure here. It doesn't count very well for me to, to do that. So I'm not that keen on this particular count. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, uh, wave four overlaps wave one. It's hard to get five waves from wave two to wave three here. Um, you know, it counts better as five waves up to this particular point there. So with that in mind, we can look at the market in a different way, which has got a better fit to it, which is this one here where we have wave one here, an A and a B and a C here for wave two, and then wave one and two here, then one and two and three and four and five here for wave three, coming back for wave four, should come back to the wave four of one lesser degree here. And in this case, we can look at the five waves down here as, as the impulse wave as one and two and three and four and five here. Then we should have a rally 50, 60%. We'll take a closer look at that. And then down for wave C here, coming back down to the wave four here of one lesser degree here, and then moving up. One thing that we can do, uh, we know we're going to get five, we've, we know we've got five waves here. So we know that we'll get a, move back up 50 or 60 percent but because we've got five here that means we're going to get another five over here so it also means too that when this comes down here we want to see how how quickly it comes down if it comes down just as fast as this here then that um other count where we've got wave one up here and a and a b and a c down here for wave two would come into play at that point but if this move down here is on more of an angle than this move here then we know that we're on the right track at that particular point but we also need to look at the whole move and we'll come back to this and we'll go into a bit more detail with this in the intraday charts but i just want to um look at the uh you know the we've had this bearish count here for you know from day dot basically but an a wave here an A, B, C, D, E here for the B wave, and then one and two and three and four and five here for having this completed up here. Now, this could very well be the case for the banks in this particular instance where we move down further. So I think it's important for us to um, look for a... I'm not really going to worry about this corrective wave here. I'm not worried about that. Now that we've got five waves down here, we'll look for the move coming back up here 
um, and then we'll look to short down here. Now, when we short here somewhere, we may only get to here and then the market will move up again, or we're going to come down deeper and faster in this point. So we really need to be on the right side at the right time. So instead of, um, you know, losing some money in here, you can go long here if you want to. We'll be pushing up today. Um, but, um, we're coming into Tuesday today. So Wednesday and Thursdays, uh, can create those swing days and take out your stops. So we need to be, you need to be mindful about that. Um, yeah, anyway, sitting nicely on this trend line here as well. So we'll look at that correction here in, in, in a moment. Um, what I would like to do now is just really have a look at the banks. So as I mentioned, um, I'll bring this back to the daily chart here for this. So with the banks, um, in this is an old chart here. It says weekly, but it's actually monthly. So this is A and Z. And this chart was done back in about 2015 here, right? So in 2015, we see this move up through here, which uh, is, is what it is. Um, but then here I mentioned that an overlap of this creates this pattern over here. So an overlap of this particular structure coming down here to this here would create this bearish count here. So that would mean that would come down for one and two and three and four and then come down for wave five here. So that's a long way down. That will take us, that will take A and Z down below $10 at that point. So, you know, that's, that's a long term call that's, um, coming into, into play. Now, if we look at some updates in this chart, I put one out, um, uh, early this year, I think it was. So in this case here, this was the move that came down and overlapped the top here. Okay, this is a monthly chart here. So it overlapped the top of this one here. So we could count five waves down here for this. So what that does straight away, it makes this the A wave here and then makes this the B wave up here taking out the top of the third wave here. So that also tells me that all of this pattern here, the A, the B, and the C wave here, is an expanded flat of wave four here. Also to the timing on this as well, because where this fast move here is the third wave down here, say the middle here, that would be the center of the whole trend here. So that means that um, if we took all of this here and flipped it on its head back down to this way, then upside down, then it would be three, four, and five coming down here. So this is how long this could possibly take to the downside here. Now, one thing I'm unsure about a little bit is, is I need to sort of do some more work on it is how to count this pattern here. I've counted it down as wave A1 here, then an A wave here, an A and a B and a C here for wave B and then wave C for wave two here and then coming down into wave three here. Now, I, I realize that this can be counted differently and I have counted it differently on the next chart we're going to look at, which I updated today, which is having the, the A waves here is cool, the A, the B and the C for the big B wave is cool, down for one, and back for two here, and then having this as wave one here, um, and then an A and a B and a C for wave two here. Uh, uh, so it's a bit of a different arrangement in here. So I need to sort of resolve that some somehow. I need to spend some time with that and look at, you know, the the XFJ and the XXJ and and the other banks and so on. And and ANZ is a little bit different from from the other banks as it's got different marketplaces in the world. Um, but still, um, you know, looking at this here as, as I suppose, I suppose we could get a triangle out of all of this as well, actually. Mm, I need to give that some consideration. So an A wave, a B wave, three wave for a C wave, a D wave, and an E wave, and then up from there. But either way, um, it's still not a pretty picture for the banks. 
So I'll think about that triangle and I'll come back to you on that. I just need, I'm probably, I'm short on time. Um, so it'll probably take me a week, but I'll just, if anybody else has got any ideas about this, well, that's fantastic. Send them through and I'll share them. So in this case here, that current rally that we're looking at with, with A and Z here and the other banks can be just a little wave four here. Or it could be this wave four too, if if I play this out differently here. But in one way or another, it's this wave four or this wave four here, and it can just move down and make new lows at this point here. So it's something to think about. If we look at um, this is A and Z here at the moment. This is uh, this is still the monthly chart here. So this corrective rally that we've been looking at here, then, you know, on the, oh, this is, this is the tricky bit. This is where will the ASX follow the banks or will it follow mining stocks? And then again, are mining stocks going to be pushing further to the upside, you know, or are they going to collapse too with, with the, with the banks here? So we need to, um, look at this a bit better. What we could say with ANZ here is that if the market found support on twenty dollars here, then we could go to then would there would be in a positive mo mode to the upside at that point. So I'll just um, take this from the monthly to the daily here and open this up. This is this is just the trading levels charting program, and I use the I just buy data from Just Data. Um, I don't make any money if I send you to Just Data to buy the data, but it's a meta stock data feed that you need. We used to have free Yahoo data in all of this, but um, the Yahoo have stopped that, um, so that causes a little bit of a problem. But I have found a place that you can get. Um, free end of day data by buying a little downloader for a hundred dollars or something or other. Um, I haven't experimented with it myself, but I'm, I'm something, just something else I need to do. Um, but look, the, what I'm pointing out here, this can be an A and a B and a C wave here for these banks. So this move down through, is this updated here? Probably not from yesterday, but, um, think the point here is that, um, Let's just take this here. This is what we'd be looking at here, really. So we need to be very careful and we need to look for the short trades because if the banks have got five waves down and they're going to be rallying, retesting, let's say the 20 in this case or somewhere there, then we need to be looking for short positions here for this because it's going to take us down to this point, come back into this support here. So that's something that perhaps we can look at this on an intraday basis um, during the week here when this, as this rally starts, which it is starting now, um, and we'll pick that back up. But um, coming back to the ASX 200 here, looking at this move up here as in line with the banks, then this this move here sits quite nicely. But with the banks, we just call this wave four, of course, an A and a B and a C for wave four, and then move down. In this case here, the ASX itself has moved up sixty one point eight percent, so it's been lifted up by the mining by the mining. Um, so we need to as we we need to go back in and we looked at the BHP and so on yesterday, and we need to be keep looking at those two, the um, the resources and the banking sector. But I think that if you're looking for stock trades, then we need to be looking, um, understanding this rally here a little bit better, and then looking to build in over this side over here for the banks. Not so much for the not so much for the for the um, mining stocks, but I could be wrong. I mean, the mining stocks will come down with it, of course, because they'll come down with the S and P and things. But um, I think that this is where they could split and go different ways. So that said, let's go in and have a look at this uh, current rally. So we can look at this rally here, as I've mentioned. Um, we can look at it as wave three up here, an A and a B and a C for wave four here. And that would be in line with the mining sector. The banking sector would come further down if I'm just guessing. I don't know, but I'm just guessing at that point for the case there. Um, 
so um, but even in this market we can look to short this here because what we've got to figure out is how quickly it comes down you know the the, the more angle something is on like this then the better the long trade of course and when markets go sideways like that that's the they're the best of all market go up market go sideways market go up <laughs> i mean that's simple so uh, sideways patterns are just continuation patterns. So just the personality of the structure. So what we're looking for here now with this is we're looking for a corrective move back up. So we can take the top of this, the low of the A wave here, as you know, and we can look at this as the 50-60% retracement level here. But of course, we always gravitate to the closest largest number and anything else that sort of sticks out. So, so this... 6,000 here is what we'd be looking for in, in, in that regard. And we'd be looking for a structure to the upside uh, as wave B. How that will play out, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, if I had to guess at this, I would say one and two here and three here and four here coming across these tops here. And then five here, then an A wave, B wave and C wave here. And then this here for that. So it would look a little bit like that there. I'll leave that. But so a little bit tricky to trade to the upside uh, here with this. So just be mindful um, of that. The 15 minute chart, I think, is is labeled for the bigger ABC correction. I'll just check. Yeah. So in this case here, we're looking at uh, wave one up here and down for an A wave coming back for the B wave here. Same, same, same sort of pattern as well here. Um, probably. label this a bit differently because I can see it hasn't got the legs to do what it's doing there but uh, so that should play out as as uh, wave one and two here and three here uh, and we'll see wave four come across here and then wave five to the upside then the A, the B and the C wave here and then five waves up here for this if we can see this at the time, then we'll be able to short up here. But in terms of getting a safe short position, what we're looking for here is one, two, three, four, and five to the downside, A, B, C here, and then you can short under here. That's where we'll be looking to, that's the safe trade at that point. You can get the money on the turn, um, you know, the money's in the turn, of course, but so is the risk. So you need to balance that out. So if you normally trade five contracts or something, then you just go in for one contract here, you know, and then stack up on this side over here. Because if we get five waves in the opposite direction, that means after a correction here to the 50, 60% mark, and then you could also short positions in at the that as well. If you could follow that up as as five three five structure here to the sixty one point eight percent, or to the closest largest number roughly, or five waves in that last move there, then you can short at a higher position there. Um, this is just the basics, and um, once that triggers there, then your short then your stop goes up here for that, and that shouldn't be breached at that point there. So we'll just put that in there as. Um, as that and what we can also do next as well the next position to get into is that this will be five waves down here and then there'll be some sort of corrective move here now it could be down for one and back for two down for one and back for two here uh, and then down again here or it might be just um, wave one two three four and five but it but if it's one and two and comes back up comes quite high if it pulls back up 50 or 60 percent here then you need to move in there again on that one there but if it's wave four and it's down here then you won't do that because we'll need to um we'll need to adjust that there again at that point but building in is tricky and you don't want to over trade because each retracement can come back you know 80 percent 61.8 percent to 80 percent or whatever um so you just got to be the beginning of getting into the beginning of the trend sounds easy but um, it's hard. The easiest thing to do is trade less and put the stop at the last high because that shouldn't be breached each time. But the 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 risk, the the exposure that you have is 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 much more at that point. Um, okay, so um, we're in looking at this particular rally to the upside here. It could be that this is just um, 
the ABC pattern here as well uh, through here, but we still need to go higher. So we, we need to end up in this box here. So I'll go for this particular pattern here at this stage. I'm looking at that. Uh, but just be mindful that um, if this just goes somehow goes straight up into here, then we need to be a bit careful. But this does appear to be five waves here, ABC here, and then another five waves starting here. So I think that we're on the right track. Um, and Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays would offer these sort of rough, these wild swings in the market at, at this stage. So um, yeah, alrighty, um, I'll leave it at that. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Much appreciated. Cheers.